in order to try to help people during this very difficult time. I know it's a very difficult time for us all right now. We've got to stay strong. We've got to stay in faith. We've got to believe the best. And we've all got to take the actions necessary to protect everyone. What I'm here to talk about today is a little bit different. You know, I've been around long enough that I've survived a couple of different recessions that were really, really tough. And we're in a recession right now, whether we like to call it that or not. I mean, people are losing their jobs and everything. You know, you, you see the news, you know what's going on. So it's tough out there. And a lot of people are working at home who've never worked at home before, and they're not exactly sure what to do and how to do it. And there's just so much uncertainty in the world right now. And so, you know, as a Christian, I'm not worried in the long term, although I know a lot of people are going to be very uncomfortable, and I'm sorry for that. But I do know that we will survive this and we will get through. And I know that in part because I've been through times like this before. You know, I bought the directory of e-zines just around the time of 9-11. And so we had that little gift that kept on giving for a very long time. And it wasn't a gift on any level. It was an evil, terrible act. But what I'm saying facetiously is what a terrible time to buy a business and then have a major catastrophe like that happen. But you know what? We survived it and we came out stronger and we learned things. We learned things about surviving. We learned things about ourselves. And when I say we, I mean Sonia and I, my wife and I, we learned things about ourselves. We learned how to work as a team. We learned how to do new things. Remember, this was a long time ago. The internet was in its infancy and, you know, there wasn't WordPress, there wasn't a lot of the stuff we have now, um, like Facebook, where you go live. So my point is this, we survived that. We came out stronger. And because we survived it, we were able to go on and expand rapidly when things got back to normal. Then in 2008, we're in England, bringing our youngest daughter to study abroad. First time going overseas, first time really traveling across the world. And what happens? The financial crisis. So I learned about the financial crisis on the BBC in a hotel room many thousands of miles away from my home, knowing I was leaving my little girl to study abroad, and it was not a lot of fun. In addition to that, I'll tell you the story in more detail later, we were moving our mailing list, and we went from 50,000 people on our mailing list to 2,500 while we were in England. So that was rough. And you know what? We survived and we learned things. We learned things about faith. We learned things about the things that come out of our mouth. What do we say? What do we think about ourselves? We learned about, we learned skills. We learned how to economize. We learned how to be efficient. And the thing I want to do is try to share what little bit of knowledge I've been able to gather over the years with you so that you can begin to stabilize and equal get find your equilibrium in this difficult time. Now, before I begin, I've got a list of things I want to share with you that I believe there are 13 ways that people can make profit during this coming recession. And before I begin with the list, what I want to do is say two things. Number one, if you want the entire list, leave a comment below. Just say, yes, send me the list. And in a couple of days, I'll get a hold of you with a PDF and you can download that PDF. So I'm preparing it right now. So please do leave a comment below. If you like this video, share it. That would be wonderful. But what I'm interested in is trying to help you. And if you want to share this with others, I'd be happy to help them too. So the second thing I would say is this. I want to be 100% clear. I'm not talking about profiting from the current situation. That is miserable. People who try to profit from the current situation by selling fear, by price gouging, by things like that, that's, that's just not good. That is just not good. My wife went out this morning to buy paper towels and she ended up paying, you know, several dollars more for paper towels than she expected. And it wasn't a price gouging thing like the $50 hand sanitizer thing that's going on. But, you know, people are taking advantage and it's a shame. Um, even in a nice little town that I live in. So um, I'm not talking at all about profiting from the current situation because I think that is despicable. I'm talking about profiting 
during the up the the downturn that's on its way. There's no question it's on its way. It's happening now. People are getting let go left and right. People are having to work at home. And you know all the news. You don't need me to repeat it. So we're definitely headed into a downturn. I do believe personally that this economy will come back and come back strong once this uh, COVID-19 thing is over with. And I think that's going to be a few weeks. I, I hope it's a few weeks. I don't really know. But whenever it is, we will survive this. And those of us who take certain actions now will come out stronger. Now, let me say this one other thing before I give you the list. I'm going to do the things I'm talking about right here. I'm doing some of these things. I can't do all of them because I'm just one person. But these are good ideas. These are ideas that are, are born from bitter experience in 2001 and 2008. And I'll tell you the logic behind the ideas. I'm going to give you the ideas right now. I'll tell you the logic behind them. And then I'm producing a document that's going to talk about um, how to go about it, actually take the steps necessary. All right. So one of the keys to profiting from a difficult time or a recession, profiting during it, not from it, is to think through what will people be thinking about? What will they be doing? What will their life look like? when it begins to get over or when people get used to the idea, okay, this is going to be with us for a while. So now we have to, we have to keep on. Right. So at the moment, a lot of deer in the headlights type of things going on, we're like in shock. We can't believe this is happening. And so what we're doing is we're kind of sitting still sometimes, not in a lazy way, but in a, Oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening way. And so we watch the news and we talk to our friends and we check on our family. Uh, we've got one family member, for example, who has it. So, you know, we want to spend time communicating with them and thank God for the technology that we can communicate. But it's a difficult time. And I want to help you see the light at the end of the tunnel and know that that light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train. It's opportunity if you make some strategic moves now. So let me give you my list and you tell me what you think. All right. I walk for exercise every day and thank God I can still walk in this environment. So, you know, we're staying in the house. I don't think I've left the house in, ooh, I don't know, a long time. Uh, I'm very high risk. So I've had COPD for 25 years and I uh, had a traumatic brain injury and I'm 65. So I kind of meet the criteria of don't, you know, I don't flirt with the rules. I obey the rules. Uh, so I haven't been out of the house in quite a while, but I do walk outside uh, in my neighborhood and in a park. And you know what I notice if I walk through the neighborhood? Everybody, just about, is cleaning out their garage. Just about everybody is cleaning out their house, cleaning out their garage, getting rid of things. We have a thing here in our neighborhood called Bulky Day, which means that on Fridays we can put stuff on the street that uh, can't go in the trash. It can't go in the recycling because it's too bulky. And that can be anything from, you know, a little cardboard box up to a, a grill, uh, anything. You know, you can put it out there. I noticed a lot of people putting things out there, but also a lot of people are saving items in their attic as they, or pardon me, as they're in their garage, as they clean that garage out. So this leads me to believe that it's just like in 2001, just like in 2008, there's going to be a boom in garage sales once people can get out and see each other again. People are going to want to save money because, you know, listen, a lot of people are getting fired. So they're going to have to shop garage sales or they're going to want to shop garage sales. So here's the action point. I'll give you this in more detail in the written document. Remember, say below in the comments that you want to get this document and I will make sure to send it to you. Also, if you like this video, if these ideas are good for you, share it. Um, so here's how you do it. You go look for private label rights products on garage sales, right? So, cause like, what do you know about a garage sale? Maybe you know everything about a garage sale and you're the garage sale expert of the world. That would be great. But if not, then how do you make money during a recession knowing that people want to do garage sales to make extra money and shop at garage sales to save extra money? How do you do that? Well, you search Google for private label rights products and with the terms garage sale, home sale, uh, pardon me, garage sale, yard sale, estate sale, things like that. Again, in the document, I'll have a, a detailed list. You buy this private label rights product, and usually it's gonna have a video, it's gonna have a book, it's gonna have some articles and things like that. You put your name on it, 
because that's what you're paying for. And when I say buy it, I'm not talking about spending, you know, $300. I'm talking about spending $30. So you buy some good quality private label rights products. You put it up for sale on JVZoo, maybe on ClickBank, maybe just put a PayPal button on it. Start talking about it on social media. Go find groups that are dedicated to garage sales and yard sales and estate sales and say, hey, I've got this thing. Uh, would you find it helpful? Just, you know, communicate. Communication is the name of the game. Gary V is right. Communicate as much as you can. So that's the first idea is that once this thing stabilizes or it's over, and Lord willing, it's over sooner rather than later. But once it stabilizes and once it's over, people are going to turn their attention to doing other things. I mean, they'll go to movies, they'll eat out at restaurants, they'll buy clothes, they'll do all the things that the right now there's a lot of pent up demand to do this. I want to travel. I want to go see a movie. I want to go out to dinner. I want to get together with my friends. All of that will happen. But in addition to that, a lot of people are going to be really devastated financially during this next period of time. They're going to need to turn to methods that make them extra money, that save them extra money. And a garage sale or a yard sale is a wonderful thing. Okay, number two, there's going to be a baby boom. Uh, almost certainly there's going to be a baby boom. We saw it in 2001, 2008. We saw it, you know, obviously after World War II when the baby boomers uh, came along, of which I am one. Um, you know, we saw that, but there's going to be a little mini baby boom, a baby baby boom, if you'd like. And so many of these uh, ladies who get pregnant, many of these couples who are having their first child. So all sorts of parenting, all sorts of pregnancy, all sorts of uh, health family type of information is going to be uh, needed at that time. So if you're in that niche now, great. And if you're not, consider doing that. Once again, if you don't have expertise, don't worry about it. Just go to PLR, uh, go to some, you know, Google PLR products about how to do that. If you need to know how to profit from PLR products, leave a note in the comments and I'll talk to you about that too. Okay. So number one, garage sales. Number two, uh, pregnancy. I mean, there's going to be a lot of pregnant ladies pretty soon. Uh, so that's it. Number three, survival. Now, survival is a tricky topic. Some people really get offended by survivalists. Some people flirt with the idea of, you know, storing up food or, or ammunition or whatever it is. Uh, and then some people are just hardcore survivalists. I know a person who's hardcore, and I'm talking about this guy, could live off the grid, no problem. Regardless of your opinion of that mentality, the fact is, it's a very popular topic. It's a very powerful topic. It's an emotionally charged topic. And world events today are validating everything that these people have been telling us. So the people in the survival movement, right, have been telling us for a long time, look, at a minimum, you've got to be able to live off the grid for a short period of time. You've got to be able to have like a couple of months worth of food. You need to have water. You need to have toilet paper. You need to have um, ammunition. You need to have a, a generator, things like that. These things that seemed three, four weeks ago, like it was like, woo, okay, that's becoming mainstream advice right now. That's becoming, oh my goodness, I wish I had been doing that. And so it's very important to understand the economic impact of that mentality spreading so you can get into the survival market. There are a, You don't have to make a career out of being in the survival market, and you certainly don't want to try to take advantage of anybody. But there's going to be a, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to want information about survivalism soon. And so you can go to you know, the big sites like Survival Life and see what they're doing. Look at the type of products they promote. Begin promoting those kind of products too. You can promote them on your Facebook page. You can buy advertising. There are a lot of things you can do. And if you're into it, you know what I mean? Like you really want to dig deep into the topic or you already have expertise, by all means, start a blog. Listen, now is the time to build your audience of followers. If you're sitting there watching this and you're saying, hey, Charlie, great advice, except I have no list. I have no blog. I have no influence. I have no presence online. Nobody knows who I am. That's okay. Now's the time to start. See, the, the thing, one of my favorite phrases is this. You don't have to start. You don't have to. Let me get it right. 
You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So get started, get yourself a blog. You know, we set blogs up for clients all the time. If we don't do it for you, you can do it yourself. You know, wordpress.com, you can go there. There are a lot of places that you can go. But begin publishing. If you don't want to have a blog of your own, go to medium.com and begin public, publishing information there. You'll find your audience. There are going to be people who want to hear your voice, just like there are people who want to hear my voice. And that's why I'm making this video. Okay, number four, there's going to be a lot of people. There are going to be a lot of people. I should use good grammar. There are going to be a lot of people who want to make money online. There are going to be a lot of people who need to make money online because they're losing their job. And that's sad. It's very difficult. I have a friend who employs many, many, many different people. And uh, I heard from him today that he let 43 people go on Friday. Broke his heart to do that. He just broke his heart to do that. But, you know, it had to be done because he has to save the ship. He can't, he can't let the ship go down because this is his livelihood. That He built this from nothing. So it, there's no winner. There are no winners in these situations. But there is redemption. There are things we can do to redeem the situation. There are things we can do to get, to, to, to get the lemonade out of the lemons, as it were. And one of the things that you can do is promote legitimate work at home opportunities. Now, I'm not talking about the one click wonders where it's like, start making $300 a day. Don't ask me how, just click here. Uh, you, you know me, if you know me at all, you know that that is not my cup of tea. Uh, I, I believe in good, solid business principles and good, solid business. And there are a lot of those out there that are work at home type opportunities. So we're not talking about the shady ones or the sketchy ones. We're talking about the ones where people are succeeding and there is an actual product and there is an actual system. So work at home is gonna be tremendously powerful, make money online. All right, here's the next one. I'm gonna go through all 13 and then I'll give you the report. Remember, uh, make a, a comment below and I'll give you the report. Uh, the next one is weight loss. People are hanging around the house. They got a, not a lot to do and they're going to eat too much. This is just uh, a worldwide phenomenon. And I know it's mostly an American phenomenon. I get that. No problem. You know, we're fat, but we don't have to be and we don't want to be. And so here's the thing. Let's say that the current situation lasts for another three months. What's going to happen? People are going to gain a lot of weight and they're going to be interested in losing that weight. And don't think that Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers or these Nutrisystem places own all the business because they don't. There's a tremendous amount of weight loss demand out there that you can satisfy. You as an individual can satisfy. I have an entire membership site that I sell about this type of thing using the keto diet. I'm on the keto diet, which is why I started the site and also... I like to help people, which is why I started the site, because this really works. So weight loss is another area. Here's another one, home fitness. Now, you're seeing this already. If you're on Facebook, which I know you are because you're watching this, um, you're seeing a bunch of Facebook videos about how to work out at home. Uh, one of my closest friends here in town owns a couple of different gyms, and you know people can't come to his gym. So what he's doing is he's working out in his garage and live streaming it because he's trying to help his people. It's not a make money thing. He's trying to help his people. He wants to help his people stay fit. Um, it's not going to work for most people or for many people. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying it takes a tremendous amount of discipline to, to work out at home. Uh, you know as well as I do that most gym memberships get bought and never used, right? So gyms oversell their capacity because they know most people aren't coming in, but they will keep paying. Well, those days are kind of over for right now. Uh, I'm a member of a gym here in town. They're closed. Uh, they've suspended my payments, and God bless them for that. But the point is, they're closed. They're just completely, and they've let their people go, which is sad. So people who want to exercise, and that's going to be more and more people, because remember, people are gaining weight even as we speak. Those people are going to need an alternative, and that's a home workout. Okay, health is another area. I'm going to move through these a little bit more quickly so that I don't spend all day with you. Um, I'm happy to do it. I just don't want to bend your ear too much. And remember, I'm going to give you the report if you, you know, leave a comment and say, yes, I want the report. Health, general health, uh, especially natural remedies, is going to be a huge, 
topic. That's going to be a huge topic coming up. Uh, people are learning now how much of our medicine is made in foreign countries. And that is not a good thing because we're not always dependent. We're dependent on countries that are not our friend. And so now I'm speaking as an American, but I'm telling you, when our antibiotics are made somewhere where they're not friendly to us, not a good thing. That sentiment is going to swing wildly in the next two or three months. Um, and so we need to recognize that. And recognizing that, we can see within that the seeds of an opportunity. Again, not trying to take advantage of anybody, uh, not trying to profit from a tragedy, but trying to profit during a tragedy, trying to profit from, not from a recession, but during a recession. So people are gonna be very interested in natural health. Uh, here's another one, work at home tools. This is different. Making money online at home is a different kettle of fish. So many people, I mean thousands, hundreds of thousands, I, maybe millions of people are having to work at home for the first time. They're not familiar with tools like Zoom or Slack or uh, ManyChat or uh, Skype in even some cases. So there are many, many tools. And here's the point about all these things I'm talking about. Many of them have affiliate programs. So if you've got a blog, if you've got a Facebook page, if you've got a Facebook profile, you can grab an affiliate link and start saying, listen, if you're stuck at home and you need to communicate with your family, Zoom is a wonderful way to do that. Or Skype is a wonderful way to do that. So you're not exploiting anybody. You're simply saying, if you meet this criteria, if you have this problem, here's the solution. This is what people buy, by the way. People buy solutions to their problems. That's all they buy ever. So the more you can solve problems, the better. And right now, people have tons of problems. All 13 of the things on this list right here are problems that people are experiencing right now through no fault of their own because it's a stupid virus that's attacking us. This virus is the enemy, and we will win the war. It is true. But in the meantime, it's going to be difficult, and there are going to be repercussions, and those repercussions are what we're talking about. All right, next turnaround strategies for businesses. I can tell you I've owned a small business for 35 years, and it ain't easy. <laughs> it's tough. You know, when you own a small business, you're on your own, especially if you're committed to being debt free. You're on your own. You got to, you know, if you don't go kill it, you don't eat it that day. And that's just the way it is. You have to go get it in order to bring it home so we can cook it and eat it. And that's fine. That's not a problem. This is the risk that we take as business owners is that we have to create or else we, we die. But here's the thing. When your business rapidly declines, and mine has several times, I've gone from 50,000 subscribers to 2,500 subscribers overnight. Thank you very much. Name of autoresponder withheld for legal reasons. I won't tell you who it was. But those dirty dogs wiped out most of my mailing list overnight. And when I contacted them, it was like, oops, sorry. Things happen. Things that are unexpected, things that are not your fault happen. And when they do, you've got to be able to survive it. And when you, the way you survive it is you're able to pivot. And you're able to pivot quickly. Now, you're hearing that word a lot, pivot, right now. Because it's necessary. But you've got to bounce back. And you've got to bounce back stronger. Turnaround strategies. There is a lot of information out there. There is a lot of information out there about turnaround strategies. Some of it you could get with private label rights. Some of it you could partner with somebody who really knows what they're doing and you could bring a product to the market together. But let me tell you, it would be a tremendous blessing to business owners who are in shock right now. They don't know what to do. They just let 15 employees go. They don't know if they're going to have to let everybody go. Are they going to have to close their doors? People are looking for how do I turn this situation around? You can be the answer to their question and everybody wins. You sell a product, they use the product, it works, everybody wins. This is just free enterprise. It's how it works. Okay, uh, how to refinance your home. As we know here in the United States, the Fed has been very aggressive in supporting the uh, government in trying to offset the decline that's happening. And we don't know yet what that's going to look like. But what we do know is that interest rates are pretty much at zero. And, you know, we've refinanced our house uh, about six, 
eight months ago, maybe a year ago. And we cut our interest rate way, way down, but we're like at 4%. You know, right now it's crazy low. So we're probably going to look at doing it again. Now we've been through the process, so we don't need how to refinance information because we've been through it. But you know what? When we went through it about eight months ago, my wife, bless her heart, she spent ages studying the best way to do it because it is not just hit an app on your phone and whoo, you got a loan. It doesn't really work that way, although that's real good advertising. Uh, there are a lot of details to attend to. This is a legal contract, a long-term legal contract with a lot of money. For most people, buying a house is the most uh, is the highest investment, the biggest investment they'll ever make. So, a lot of people are going to need to refinance their house because they're going to need to lower their expenses, maybe get money out. There's going to be refinancing available, and so how do you match those two up? How do you take, you know, John and Jane who have a house and they want to refinance it? Get the information to them so they can get it done quickly. That's your job, is to facilitate the things that people need by providing information. Because information is king. It, no question about it. Bill Gates said in 1999, content is king. It's still true. If it weren't true, Google wouldn't be the biggest site in the world. People go to Google to find information. They don't go there just to look at pictures and stuff like that. Okay, uh, let me give you two more, and then I'm going to be done. Uh, Number one, attitude and mindset. Listen, a lot of people are going to get depressed during this period of time. They're going to get discouraged. And, you know, Zig Ziglar said a long time ago, you are who you are, you are where you are in your life because of what goes into your mind. You can change where you are. You can change who you are by changing what goes into your mind. Best book I ever read on mindset, best book I ever read in my life outside the Bible is called Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Uh, read it. You'll love it. Mindset's important. And I'm not talking about, oh, yeah, so, you know. Uh, I, I watch these videos from these marketers. And it's like the, the fake enthusiasm is just difficult to watch. Um, if you're enthusiastic, that's great. If you have that personality, I think that's wonderful. You know, I think Russell Brunson has an actual enthusiastic personality. But a lot of people are just out there, you know, faking it and ginning it up. And, and okay, you know, I'm not judging anybody. Here's what I'm saying. Your mind belongs to you. Only you can control what goes into your mind. Only you can control what you believe about what you think. And only you can control what that does to your attitude. So now's the time. Right now is the time to grab a book that you know will help you. It's proven. It's not edgy. It's not woo-woo. Maybe it's going to work. Something proven. Okay, so I'll give you two suggestions. Number one. See You at the Top by Zig Ziglar or Over the Top by Zig Ziglar. Eat a book, right? These are basic, conservative, fundamental techniques that have been proven and proven and proven by millions of people worldwide. Number two, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. That is a life-changing book. So, you know, I recommend those two. I read them. I reread those two at least twice a year, every year, and have done so for eh, 30 years. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Here's the last one. I'll give you this last one. And remember, one more, one more appeal that you can put a comment in the, uh, and leave a comment in in the comments and say, yeah, I want the report, and then when I have it ready, I'll send it to you. Okay, the next one is debt freedom. Debt is bondage. Debt is very difficult. I mean, I get that there's good debt. I know that there are people out there who say, well, I don't mind getting in debt as long as my cash flow is covering it. Those people are running for the hills right now. Now, everybody is entitled, their own, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, including me. And here's my opinion. Debt is slavery. You know, that's what the Bible says. The debtor is the slave of the lender. And do I have debt? Absolutely. Unfortunately, I do. I don't own my home outright. I've had to take on debt in the business. I don't like doing these things, but the fact is it's very manageable, which is a wonderful thing. And we work very hard, my wife and I, to eliminate that. And we get it eliminated. And then we try not to get back into it. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But debt is a epidemic portion, at epidemic proportions in America and in other countries. And with everything in the financial world being weird right now, we don't know what's going to happen. What we do know is this. For a short period of time, we'll get relief, right? So one of the things that the president has said so far is that 
they're not going to be trying to collect on student loans and they're not going to be evicting people and and things like that. These are all wonderful measures, but they're short term measures. They won't last forever. So once they're gone, they're gone. In the meantime, while they're happening, they'll probably happen for three or four months. During that period of time, learn all you can about getting out of debt. Now, the voice I like on this is Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey has a wonderful book. I got it right there uh, about how to get out of debt. And uh, so, you know, go to his website, read his book, however you like to do it. But consider this. If you're thinking about getting out of debt, I know I am. Think about the millions of people around the world who are saying, oh, my goodness, I have to get out of debt. I can't be in this vulnerable position again. Once again, tremendous amounts of opportunity for sharing information about how to get out of debt, how to handle your finances, how to make money online, how to do things like that. So uh, once again, that's my list. It's, uh, you know, I just have it on a legal pad right now, but I'm going to type it up, make a report out of it, give it to you for free. I'm not going to sell it at all. And uh, I want you to know this from the bottom of my heart. You're going to get through this. We're all going to get through this. Some things will change. Some things will probably change forever, but things will change. But here's the thing. We will overcome this. And when we overcome this, if we take action now, the right action now, we will come out of it stronger. Now, here, let me tell you, I'll just wrap up by saying this. Let me tell you what I'm doing in my business. I'm automating everything I can get my hands on. So right now, a lot of my products, I just advertise them straight away and then I send people to a sales letter and then I have a webinar and then I do these other things. I'm automating everything I can because here's what I know. Leverage, time leverage is going to be very, very important coming up pretty soon. So I'm leaning heavily on automation. If you want to know more about how I'm doing that, stuff like that, leave a comment below and I'm happy to share. So I'm going to go. I, I hope you enjoyed. This is my first ever Facebook Live. Feels kind of weird to do. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed being here or you're enjoying watching the replay. Once again, last time I'll say it, if you want the uh, report that I'm writing up, go ahead and leave a comment and say, yeah, I'd like that. If you find this helpful, then uh, share it with other people. If you don't find it helpful, tell me because <laughs> I want to do something that's helpful for you. And uh, I want to make sure that I don't miss the mark, but that I hit the mark. All right. That's it for me. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to stop this live now. And I thank you very much. And I will be back soon because I'm going to be sharing more of this type of information on Facebook. Uh, maybe not every day, but as often as I can, because I really, really want to help if I can. Thank you so much. Have a great day.